Okay, so now we've run the pellets through. Um, one of the important things is that when you look at the pellets, you'll notice that there's little uh, debris caught in there, so you don't want to reuse these pellets. Um, if anything, you can reuse them to clean out the barrel a second time, but don't use them to extrude. Uh, the other thing is, when you're running it dry, the motor's going to get pretty toasty to the uh, touch, so be careful when you're touching that. So next up now, we're going to go ahead and install the uh, insulation because this heater right here will get very hot and that heat's going to travel back and you don't want to end up burning yourself. So there's two components when you're doing the insulation. There's a thin part right here, it's fiberglass covered and kept on tape. And that's going to go over the thin tube back here where it's not as hot. For the thicker insulation right here, this is the silica insulation, that's going to go directly over the heated clamp right here. So what we recommend to do when you're starting out is take this and remember the one part of the kit we say we don't include is uh, the Kapton tape and the electrical tape. So you're going to have to provide your own Kapton tape for this. So go ahead and tape it um, over the length right here. Leave a little bit extra and then cut that. Okay. Then what you want to aim for when you do this is where the uh, screws on the clamp over here Go ahead and line this up right on that edge over there. And you basically want to wrap this under so that this goes nice and snug right around that uh, nozzle. And make sure you pull it tight and tape just like that. Then what you do is you take the next piece of tape and you do the same thing. Make sure to pull it again nice and tight. And you can kind of shift this forward just a bit so you're fully covering that nozzle. Um, the next one up is this one. So let's go ahead and get another piece of tape. Okay, and go ahead and put it over the edge. Now it's going to be a little bit thick, so you can go ahead and fold the edges up to make it fit and push the wires forward here. And again, where the wires come out, that's where you want the opening to be. So you just wrap it all the way around like this. And tape from the bottom. And then for good measure, we're gonna tape the silica thick insulation, the quarter inch one, to the fiberglass one so nothing slides around too much. Now your unit is insulated. Um, if you want, you can add additional insulation uh, to see your needs, but this should be enough that you don't get burned if you touch it, but you can't leave your hand there. It will still get very hot. So now, as you recall from the step where we had uh, deburred out all the metal chips using the pellets, um, we already have the motor plugged in. So what we're going to do at this point now is we're going to plug in the heated clamps, which are these two fiberglass wires right here, and the thermocouple wires, which are the red and black wires right here coming out. So if you look again at the uh, splash panel right here on the electronic control box, you have a T to the right of the M. T is for thermocouple, negative is for the black, uh, positive is for the red, and you have an H for the heater. You'll notice that there is no negative or positive because it doesn't matter the order that you plug in the uh, heated band clamp wires in. So go ahead and hook the black thermocouple to the negative and the red to the positive. Okay, and you'll notice the green wire uh, is not needed. The green wire is actually for the slow speed of the motor. So um, it, it makes the motor turn slower, and we want it to, get, to extrude faster, so um, that's not necessary right now. Okay, so one of the important things when you actually start running your unit uh, on a regular basis is it's good practice to leave the motor DC plug unplugged until the unit's actually at temperature, so you don't inadvertently turn the unit on um, while it's not hot, because what will do happen is the motor will try and turn while the plastic inside the barrel is fused and uh, 
that can cause damage to your unit, so it's, it's best to avoid that. So the other plug, the one that comes out of the electronic control box rear, is the AC plug. You need to plug that plug in as well. Okay, so what you're going to notice is when this plug over here is to the right, the unit's off, and the moment you flip it to the left, it comes on. It takes a few seconds to boot up. Okay, so the default temperature is going to be uh, 100 Celsius. Um, so we need to uh, change that. Uh, if you're using ABS, what you're going to change this is you hit the blue AT button right here, and it will blink. You need to hit it again, again, and again until the blinking one is on the 100. And then you can bump that up to a 2 by hitting the green up arrow. And then you hit this uh, blue one again. And go ahead and get to repeat the process until you get to 212 and you hit set. You'll notice as we've been doing this, the temperature is rising because right now it's going to try and meet the target temperature right here, which is 212. So this is something you should see. You should start to see the unit heat up. Um, you're going to smell uh, some slight fumes. They're not going to stay there um, after they burn off. Uh, there shouldn't be any fumes from the unit. So it'll get reach temperature pretty quickly, um, but it's going to overshoot and then settle back down. So the best method is to wait about 25 to 30 minutes um, to really get good thermal equilibrium. Because what's going to happen is as this unit heats up right here, um, the heat's going to travel back and it's going to start to heat up the pipe. It's going to start to heat up this flange a bit. And uh, because we have this insulation here, it's not going to travel back to this flange too much. But all of this acts like a heat reservoir. And that heat reservoir is necessary because once you start turning on the extruder right here, oh, see, that's exactly why we do that. We want to plug the um, DC motor in now. Once you start turning that in, uh, and the plastic starts pumping through and coming out, it's going to start cooling down again. You need that heat reservoir um, to keep the heat in there. So we're going to come back after this unit has uh, heated up.